Hello, I'm Josh Lawrence, a technical service specialist with McElroy Manufacturing. I'm here in McElroy's technical center to demonstrate the proper use of a number 14 pit bull fusion machine with two inch IPS gas pipe. The process is the same if using water pipe or any other high density polyethylene. I will be fusing in accordance with ASTM F2620. This is the generally accepted standard for fusion of polyethylene in the United States. There are other standards that may govern your process, so make sure that you understand the parameters that you are required to fuse to for your job site. The first step is cleaning the ends of the pipe. Clean it with a lint-free cloth such as a plain paper towel before loading it into the machine. I am trying to remove any potential source of contamination. Don't forget to check the inside of the pipe and clean it if there's any sign of dust, dirt, and so on. Make sure you have the correct inserts for the pipe size that you are working with. Load the pipe into the machine leaving about a finger width extending past the jaws. This allows enough pipe material to achieve a complete face off. Make sure the pipe is loaded straight and is aligned with the machine. Use the clamp knobs to tighten the jaw around the pipe. Do not use a wrench. Just tighten by hand clamping the pipe firmly but don't get carried away. The jaws are serrated to hold the pipe with ease. Place the facer into the machine using the guide rod support brackets and make sure that the facer latch is engaged. Then switch it on and use the lever on the movable jaw to move the pipe ends into the facer. If you hear the motor bogging down, you're using too much force. Make sure and face until the carriage hits the mechanical stops. Hold the carriage in this position and turn the facer off. Wait until the blade stops spinning before opening the carriage. Then inspect the pipe faces to make sure that we have a complete face off. This means there should be at least one complete ribbon of pipe material. The end of each pipe must be faced to ensure that the pipe ends are parallel and to make sure we have clean, fresh material to fuse. Use a pen or something similar and check the alignment of the pipes. It should be almost perfectly flush. ASTM requires misalignment to be less than 10% of the wall thickness of the pipe. We should always try to get it as close to perfect alignment as possible because misalignment can affect the strength of the joint. Also, squeeze the pipe ends together to check that they are clamped firmly enough to prevent any slipping of the pipe in the jaws. If the pipe slips, reinstall the pipe with a little more clamping pressure and start the facing process over again. Clean the heater butt plates with a clean, dry, non-synthetic, lint-free cloth. In this example, I'm using a plain white paper towel. Dirty butt plates can cause contamination of the fusion area. You'll notice the thermometer on the heater. It is used to measure the internal temperature of the heater and should be used for reference purposes only. Check the surface temperature of the heater using a surface pyrometer. ASTM F2620 specifies a temperature range of 400 to 450 Fahrenheit for butt fusion. Be sure to measure the heater surface where the pipe will come into contact with it. Position the heater in between the pipe ends, placing the guide rod support brackets on the guide rods to support the heater. The end of the stripper bar should be placed over each of the jaws. Now we close the pipe ends onto the heater. Don't use excessive force. All we are trying to do is make sure that the pipe ends are in contact with the heater. Engage the locking cam on the carriage. This will allow the machine to assist in holding position once we make our fusion. Allow the pipe to heat. This is called the soak cycle. It is imperative that no force is applied during this process. For 2 inch IPS DR11 pipe, we must have a minimum of 1 16th of an inch bead size. Check the current ASTM F2620 for the required bead widths for other pipe sizes. Remember that it is very important that we get a sufficient heat soak. It is better to heat a little too long as opposed to not long enough. When the minimum bead size has been reached, it is time to remove the heater. This entire process should not take longer than 8 seconds. As you will see, this is not hard to achieve. Open the carriage. Allow the stripper bars on the heater to strip the heater off the pipe ends. Don't jar the heater to break it free. Remove the heater, taking care not to bump the pipe ends. Make sure the heated pipe ends are flat and smooth with no unmelted areas. After the visual inspection of the heated pipe ends, close the carriage and make the fusion. Use enough force to get a complete double rollback bead. The number 14 has a 14 to 1 mechanical advantage, so this process should not require a lot of effort. Do not use an excessive amount of force. Stop the fusion process if you see the slightest concave surface, an area that didn't melt, or a speckled sandpaper looking surface, 
Any of these conditions will result in a fusion that is not as strong as it should be. So, if any of these are visible, stop the fusion process, let the pipe ins cool, and start over. Leave the fusion in the machine with a cam lock engaged and allow the fusion to cool. ASTM specifies a cool time of 11 minutes per inch of pipe wall. Cool time is the wall thickness in inches times 11 minutes. To figure out the wall thickness, we will take the outer diameter of the pipe and divide it by the dimension ratio, or DR. You can look up the outer diameter dimensions of most pipe sizes in the back of our catalog. Our pipe is 2 inch IPS, which has an outer diameter of 2.37 inches. So, we'll take 2.37 inches and divide it by 11, which gives us a wall thickness of 0.22 inches. To calculate our cool time, we will take the wall thickness of 0.22 inches and multiply it by 11 minutes. The cool time for 2 inch IPS DR11 pipe will be 2.37 minutes, which works out to 2 minutes and 22 seconds. In this case, with this pipe size and this DR, the cool time was the original outer diameter of the pipe. This is not usually the case, so make sure you do the calculation. Once the cool cycle is completed, disengage the locking cam, loosen the clamp knobs, and open the jaws. The final step to any fusion is inspection. A thorough visual inspection of the fusion will catch many of the potential problems. Here is what we are looking for. This fusion is unacceptable as the bead is not uniform around the circumference of the pipe. This fusion does not have a complete double rollback bead. This bead has contamination in it. This bead has a double wave to it. This one is obviously mitered at the joint. This means that the pipe ends were not aligned correctly. So as you can see, the fusion process is pretty easy and goes quickly. A properly fused joint will be as strong or stronger than the pipe itself. It is key that you follow the steps outlined in this video to ensure your fusion is made to standard.